Maria, the artist behind the Sedgari statue that we're going to unveil soon. Now this is just a rambling to come forward. Tell us how this started. So, um, well, it started a few years ago when uh, Senator Brenda Hood was unveiling my uh, monu uh, a little sculpture which is outside the uh, airport, the dances. That sculpture is based on uh, a Grenadian artist Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started to talk about uh, possibility of making a statue to commemorate Sir Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is how it started. And I, I said that I would be very happy to work on it and help her and find out whatever is necessary. So, um, so um, well, I also then started to think how I would approach that. That's a whole two years ago. Well, yes. that actually was in um, at the end of uh, uh, 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what, what did you, how did you approach it uh, from a picture? Well, I, I first I started to read about Sir Eric so that I know more. I got a book, very interesting book. Uh, well, that was a, a slightly later where the book of his life was published. Mm -hmm. But by then I already sort of read, what the internet is a great place to find information. So I was, first I started with that and uh, well, read as much as possible, talked to some people who knew him. I, I have a few friends who knew him as well. Mm -hmm. and. Um, worked with him and so on. So we started like that. Started I wanted research. to yes. start my research. I wanted to know what kind of person he was. Um, well, I talked to uh, Senator Brenda Hood as well quite a bit about mm -hmm. it. And so then I discovered that he was a very elegant man and mm -hmm. um, very handsome, of course, which mm -hmm. comes through his photographs. Um, and so then I, we decided that he would be portrayed wearing a white suit. Which was his favorite color. Which was his, uh, yes. <laughs> and um, so then I, I started to look uh, for a model. I wanted him to be um, upright and approaching people, talking to people, being very, very presentable as he was. Um, I, I found uh, somebody who sort of vaguely looked like him. Really? Um, <laughs> a person here, well, vaguely. Yeah. Um, and he was, yeah, and he had white suit. Okay. <laughs> which was also a help. So I took some photographs of that person. Mm -hmm. And this is how it started. So the, 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 the posture has started that way, and then the colors. Mm -hmm. uh, once I had that worked out, um, it was a question of finding the right um, foundry to do the casting. Before you go into the foundry, I'd want to get a little bit of who is Maria, the artist. You obviously have been doing this sort of work for a long time. Well, a long time. I'm really very old. <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> well, yes. Um, so, yes, I have done a lot of things in my life, but I have worked with bronze and did a lot of sculptures in London. I was, I was based in London before I came to Grenada. I have been in Grenada now almost 20 years, okay. um, but before I came here I did some very big projects in England, mm -hmm. um, which includes um, Egyptian Hall and Egyptian Escalator in Harrods, which contain miles and miles of bronze work, mm -hmm. and also glass. I also work not just with bronze, but I also work with glass. Mm -hmm. um, so I was quite well experienced um, with bronze um, and also um, I have also done a big sculpture. I was representing Grenada in a special symposium in uh, China mm. um, where I did uh, a, a big sculpture um, which also allowed, I was also taken to, 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 to see various Foundries okay. in China. So that's the connection there. Well, we're going to get to the, China. Yes, with the China. Why yes. did I choose China? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually went all over the world researching foundries for that sculpture because I wanted the two colors, which uh. presented a very big problem because 
foundry is only do bronze work. So the two colors were. It's the, but most unusual. Yeah. The two colors is the bronze white, the bronze, and, and stainless. In this case, stainless steel. Stainless steel. Okay. And they are ancient. Uh, I knew that this is possible because I have seen ancient um, monuments, ancient uh, busts, for mm -hmm. example, in Italy, in the museums where they are two colors, there is silver. But what they were using then, it was actual silver ah. uh, for the silver color and the bronze. Mm -hmm. uh, I came across a foundry in Italy, which was uh, making experiments of making silver bronze, but that was fantastically expensive and not yet quite functional on the scale that mm -hmm. I needed. Mm -hmm. And so finally I found one foundry, which is actually the oldest foundry in China. Yeah. I, I found them partly because I got totally in love with one of the sculptures of one of the um, Chinese artists, which actually works in Paris, but uh, they did the they did the sculpture, which is the monumental snake, mm -hmm. uh, which okay. which is in in France, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, so I went. I contacted them, and then it turned out that they can help me because they can work with two metals, so they work with stainless steel and bronze. How did this process happen? Were you uh, making yourself available in China, communicating from Grenada, because that's pretty far away. Well, that's, that's fine. I was very happy with the Chinese um, arrangement, and all, it was the Chinese arrangement with the Chinese people. I, was, I, spent to, uh, I spent over a month in China when I was working on the sculpture, so, mm. and, and, and then visited probably about 10 foundries. Okay. So I knew how they work, um, uh, I knew a lot of people, and um, so that was quite simple because once you know about the, the process, mm -hmm. but then you can have an uh, in-depth conversation with people who answer your phone and find out everything you need. Mm -hmm. there, was another, there was another foundry in Indonesia, for example. They do a lot of sculpture in Indonesia, and I was talking to them, but they were not able Although they were giving me very good price for the mm -hmm. um, for, for the sculpture, they were not able to work in the two colors. So you found that the Chinese were the best fit for well, it. Well, this is the yeah. only, and I can vouch for it that this is the only foundry that can cast stainless steel. It's a, a, a it's amazing work. It's extremely difficult material to work with. It's extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And they just um, they just conquer it. What was the process like? What the length of time involved? Because certainly this is it's quite a, a well. It a took, lot of work. Yes, it took yeah. a, a long time. Uh, well, it took a long time, and it also took a lot of um, ingenuity mm -hmm. um, on part of um, Senator Brenda Hood to find the foundings. Okay. Because although the I was coming with fairly reasonable cost. Mm -hmm of the of statue of that size, it's still quite a lot of money. I know that so, she's been working very hard at getting funding for it. So we were, yeah. so eventually, well, eventually we, we did manage mm -hmm. to get some, something together and, um, and, the, and the sculpture started. But the curious ones out there, how did you get that? Statue here by ship, by plane. Oh by no, no, it was shipped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was shipped. But uh, funny enough, when it was shipped, um, we waited for it for so long, and yet we were not ready for it. Oh. Okay. Quite. Mm -hmm. So I had to take the, the crate into my garden, mm -hmm. where it stayed for a couple of months or so. Until we started work on in the botanical gardens. The botanical gardens. The Botanica Gardens is very precious to Sir Eric Matthews. Yes. He held his office there. He was very proud of the uh, Botanica Gardens. So, the ideal spot for that. Walk us through the process in putting the statue up in, in the Botanical Gardens. Well, there was also many processes because I started, I designed the gardens and my first design, well, I've designed the gardens about five times <laughs> <laughs> because I designed one thing and then I, th I thought that it wasn't good enough for mm -hmm. him. So then I designed this monumental um, 
area because I thought that we may just as well create more of a um, entertainment area for people with by benches uh, yeah. sitting around and so on. Um, so it was on a much larger scale. But what we, we discovered that my large scale designs were um, impossible to, to, to finance. To finance, yes. yes. So I had to cut down all my ideas and mm. eventually we just reduced it to what it is now and I am I must say that I'm extremely pleased with it yes. because it still fulfills our the idea, the, the general idea behind the sculpture was that it was um, seraric for people because he was so much uh, people's people mm. a person and uh, and being like that I didn't want to put him on any more big monument I wanted him to be more on the level with everyone so you can come up closer you can touch him you can mm -hmm. You can the walk focus around. is on him and not, uh, and not a huge on, on huge base. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, so this is, I think this is working very well. Um, I noticed too that there's some lights involved. It means that he's going to have a glow in the night as well. Yes, well, yeah. yes, that's right. We've organized the light. And, um, well, because we, we reduced the monument, I wasn't able to put the lights, the spotlights very close to him because that would inhibit us walking closer to him. Right. And so I had this idea of bringing a stone from the quarry in, in Grenada, in mm -hmm. Lanzapin. I found a very right. nice big stone. It, it, was quite a, it was quite a journey as well, almost as, mm -hmm. as, as complicated as Sir Eric's journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had to bring it from the quarry to the garden and then it was sitting outside the gate mm -hmm. and it took us many, many days before we... Uh, we